Hi and welcome to TechNut. As you know, we've already made a couple of videos on network attached storage. Apparently, the guys over at TerraMaster saw those videos and asked if we want to have a look at their product, the F2220, a two bay NAS for home use and for small businesses. Of course, we said yes. So let's have a look at what comes in the blue box. Start with the probably most boring stuff. We got a power adapter, TerraMaster bag. We get a power cable for this. This seems to be the UK plug. Included in this box is already the EU plug. You get a network cable, which is always a good thing. Actually, get a tool to install your hard drives. Screws for these would be the hard drive ones, and I suppose these would be for SSDs. We also get a warranty card and something that I think is a start up guide. In some protective plastic, we have the white box. That would be the NAS. Looks something like this, comes in some more plastic. Looks like we're gonna need some scissors for this. Scissors found. And here is the NAS itself. Without any drives installed, it's very light. Uh, cool to the touch, I would say this is probably aluminium. Plastic front. So let's have a closer look. On the front of the device, we got the two drive bays. These will support 3.5 and 2.5 inch drives. We have status LEDs for both of the drives, as well as for the LAN, and a power indicator, as well as a power button. On the top, we get some information telling us to do it right, which explains how to install the drives. We'll have a look at that in a moment. On the side, except for the TerraMaster logo, there's not much to see. And in the back, we've got two USB ports, one LAN port, the power supply jack, as well as a fan that I would say is about 80 millimeters. So we're specking the NAS out with two VD Red 3 terabyte drives. The NAS itself will currently support up to two 8 terabyte drives for a total of 16 terabytes unless you're using RAID. We'll be doing a RAID configuration to give us three terabytes of duplicated space. Uh, what you need is of course the drives, we're using the included screws as well as the included screwdriver. Nice touch by the way. Um, on the top there's instruction for how to put back the trays for the discs, basically you push them in and push them and lock them into position by pushing down the tab here. To open up, just take it out by putting your finger here and pulling. The Drive caddies are labeled HD1 and 2, and so are the actual base. So we're going to put this to the side, get out some screws. And the screws are put in at the bottom, so just line things up. And put the screws in. Installing the drives is very simple. Make sure that the trays are in their open position. Check out the numbering. Two goes in the slot marked two. When they're all the way in, push the front to lock. So that's the hardware installation done. We're going to go ahead and connect this to the network, give it some power and see what happens. The setup process is really simple. After looking at the setup guide, you can see that we need to install a desktop application to locate the NAS on our network. So we're going to do just that. Starting up the utility 
immediately reveals the NAS on the network and allows us to start the configuration. After hitting the start button, we immediately get to the hard drive setup. Both drives are found, and after a while, they have checked and have seemed to be in good condition, so we can proceed. Next, we're installing the operating system. This is an automatic step, unless you want to do it manually, so we're just going to hit next. We get some information that the hard drives will be deleted, and of course we're already fine with that. After the installation, the NAS needs to be restarted, and we can move on. After the restart, you can give the device a name, set our time zone, create a user account, and all the regular stuff. The RAID setup visualizes how the drives will be used. We're going for RAID 1. As you can see, there are more options available. Some of these will of course not be available on this model with only two drives. Once we hit confirm, we can start formatting the RAID partition. And a few moments later, we're ready to sign in with the account we just created. Once you've signed in, if you're familiar with Synology drives, you will find yourself right at home. You can do pretty much everything that you would expect. You can create users, groups, create shared folders for this, and everything that we tested out worked exactly as you would expect. You also have the opportunity to download some applications that are available on the device. These might have changed since the video was created, so make sure to check out TerraMaster's website for the latest updates. We've now been using the TerraMaster F2-220 for about two months to see how well it performs. First, we're going to talk about the build quality. The most of the device is made out of aluminum, which feels really sturdy. However, the front and back are both made of plastic, which are not quite as nice, of course. The build quality shouldn't cause you any problems, though, unless you're planning on moving this device around a lot and banging it into stuff. Uh, but then uh, I would consider another device altogether. You might experience some rattling from the drive base. This is also a problem that I have on my way more expensive Synology DS1515 Plus, so I wouldn't blame this device for it, but it's something to be aware of. You might not want to have this device too close to yourself when you're working or so. There is some noise from the fan as well, um, but if you're storing this away in the place where you won't see it or hear it, there should be any problems whatsoever. When it comes to performance, that's where this device really has the upper edge on its competitors. This device currently retails at $180 on Amazon. And its competitor in that price range will most likely give you something like a dual-core 1.4 GHz processor and 512 megs of RAM. While this device comes with a dual-core Celeron processor at 2.4 GHz with 2 gigs of RAM. This will give you the upper edge when it comes to running things like Plex, of course. I cannot guarantee that this will perform well for, for instance, transcoding 4K media. However, in the testing that we've done between the NAS and the TV, things have been working just fine. And it should outperform its competitors in this price range. When it comes to managing the device and setting it up, I would say it's pretty simple. Uh, the GUI and the setup process reminds me a lot of setting up my Synology device. There are some rough translations in places, but you shouldn't have any problems getting around it. When it comes to the enterprise capabilities, this one lacks AD support. My Synology has that, and that's one of the reasons why I chose it over a cheaper device. But for most home users, if you're not using an AD, of course, that's not something that you need to consider. Reliability for the two months that we've used this device has been great. Everything has been working as you would expect it to, transfer speeds have been consistent, and Plex has been running great. Uh, there's been no need to restart the device, nothing like that. Exactly as you would expect. So really the reason to go for this device over a more expensive or another device in the same price point would be the value. It is a nice device, it's working exactly as it should, and for the money you're spending you get way more performance than you would get from a competitor. And if you add the money to get a device, the same specs from let's say a more well-known brand, you would spend a lot more cash. So this is definitely something to look into. The only thing that I would be aware of is making sure that if you're looking for a specific application to run on your NAS, ensure that it is available on the TerraMaster as well. And that's all for now. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to check out our other videos. If you're not already subscribed, hit the button on the screen now. Thanks for watching TechNut and we hope to see you soon again.